Now, in the weeks after the presidential and governorship elections, Nigerians have seen some political parties struggling with internal conflict after what some called a surprise win for Peter Obi in Lagos State for the Labour Party. It seems that things may be falling apart for the party at the state level. A former chairman of the state branch, Olukaya De Ezekiel Saleko, now says he believes that if the party's candidates in, Labor, in Lagos, Baribo Rose Viver, had won, the state's progress would have been set back. So what is the future of the Labour Party in Lagos? Olukaya De Salako joins me right now to get into those and, of course, a few other conversations around the Labour Party. Mr. Salako, welcome to Politics HQ. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, good evening, my dear sister. So it you have... It's nice uh, to be on your show. All right, and this is the second time. So let's get straight <laughs> into it. So you have a write-up that you published that made a long list of allegations and uh, a bit of accusations toward the Labour Party's governorship candidate, uh, Rhodes Viver, in the Lagos state. Um, but let's start from the top of that. You mentioned, of course, that you gave him the LP ticket for free without negotiating with him or charging him. You also mentioned not getting shishi or any encouragement for your office. In terms of your expectations, when Baribo Rose Viver joined the Labour Party, what were they? Why give him a ticket for free when apparently there were others who were willing to pay for it? Well, thank you very much. Um, by my operational nature, by my nature as a person, <clears throat> I'm not a money-centric person. I don't put money first in whatever I do. I try to consider merit <clears throat> and um, whether the person deserves it or not. So I met uh, Barry Boros Rival in the course of his um, journey in our party. He wanted the ticket badly, desperately. I saw him as a middle-aged person among the rest of the contestants, or let me say the aspirants. Mm -hmm. I saw that he's a youth, a 39 year old, good looking man. And I thought to myself that, okay, since we have the issue of the youth agitation out there, NSAS, a lot of young Nigerians who want change as a fallout of the last NSAS situation we had, in Nigeria, I thought to myself that, oh, as a state chairman, this guy won't be a bad, um, you know, person to use to win Lagos. To use to win Lagos. Yes. You see, democracy is a competitive social adventure. It's a competition. Mm -hmm. The APC... Um, I put their own best down, which is Governor Bajide Sonwolu. The PDP also thought, okay, Jandor was their best. And we also thought, I also thought as a state chairman then, within my capacity as a state chairman, I also thought, okay, out of the options we have, I mean, we had, that Baribor Rosvival could be more attractive to the Lagos electorate. By virtue of the attributes I saw surrounding his person and mm -hmm. personality. So I stood my ground and I was able to help him to get the ticket. Okay, so let's move forward <clears throat> a bit because I find it interesting that you also confessed to not knowing much about him. In fact, let me quote you said, you didn't even bother to know. And given some of the claims you've now made against him, and in fact, it looks like an indictment on you as the chairman, even an indictment on the Labour Party state hierarchy, to possibly not do dil due diligence and give somebody a ticket when you're now saying you didn't in fact bother to get to know him. The national chairman of the party has blamed me for that. The national leadership of the party has blamed me for that. And I've apologized to them. I've, te I've tendered an unreserved apology. I, 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 Bradley Rosvival's physical appearance, you know, got me so attracted to him. 
I was absorbing that, that I didn't even consider who, who I think it should be. I wasn't looking at, you know, in politics, when people want, to, when people want something, mm. they, they hide their character, they hide their nature, they hide who they are. So they, they wouldn't want you to know who they are because if they should let you know, they might not get that thing from you. So what most people do in politics is to hide who they are until they get what they want. When they get it, then they might now decide to show you they are. And that is what happened between me and uh, Badebo. Badebo was like a brother. We were very close. And he used to listen to me. We used to run things together. We, we could talk for three, four hours on phone. We used to talk almost every morning, very early in the morning. We would talk for about two, three hours, sometimes one hour on phone, two hours, two, three hours. We used to enjoy it until he got the ticket. And immediately, he got, even before he got the ticket, I had been observing that kind of you know, unpleasant uh, manifestations from his you know, attitude. But I was already in it. I was over 90% in it. I couldn't go back. back. Out. I couldn't back out. So I had to continue to play my role for him to emerge as the governorship candidate of our party. Okay. And what I thought when I was running things with him then was that the project would be our project. He would get the ticket and I would be there to support him, to work with him. You actually to said that with him. you wanted to make a name for yourself as the state chairman. Yes. I wanted to use Bad Neighbor Revival as my own candidate. You know, I am using mine because I was the state chairman. So the responsibility to either lose Lagos or win Lagos rests with you. Was resting on me or with me. So I wanted to make a name for myself. So I thought Bad Neighbor Revival was the best among the options we had then. And I, that could be attractive, especially to the youth, to the Lagos youth, these answers, you know, agitators, uh, the non indigenous because I knew that his wife is Igbo, uh, non Yoruba, and the mother too is Igbo. So I thought to myself that, okay, if we use someone like this, that is half Yoruba, is half Igbo, then it could, it could give us you know, gather good votes for our party from both sides. Yorubas will find him attractive to vote for. The non religious the Igbos too, will find him attractive. The youth, the NSAS people, the Christians, the <coughs> middle-aged class people, the professionals, mm. and even, even beautiful women who like beautiful guys. You know? So, so uh, will that find last him attractive. So that last you gave statement. my party the winning vote. Okay, so let's <laughs> let's go through some of that in yeah. terms of what you said because you've talked about reporting him to party leaders a number of times, expecting I him did. to do the right thing. But if somebody was to read what you wrote, there are a long list of names that you called him. There are accusations that are bordering on anti-party behavior. And now you're telling us that there were situations in which you would spend hours on the phone, and somehow the relationship between yourself and Barry Boy Rhodes Viver ended up souring. So in some instances, there are people who might feel that it's because you're angry about being left outside, that you wanted to ride his coattails to win and to also promote yourself. What do you say to people who might think that? Well, I am human. People should know that I'm a human being. And um, I was the leader of the party who wanted to make a name for himself. I wouldn't want to go all out for someone to pick the ticket of my party as a governorship candidate, and after picking it, that turned his back against me. It's not done in politics. It's, it's like that in every political party. We, we hear things like that in PDP, we hear it in APC, we hear it in APGA, where you see people disappointing people like that. And um, the reason I actually came out to express myself about my plight was because I thought maybe Badeba would 
allow sense of reasoning to prevail, to guide him. But he was still arrogant about it. He was arrogant about it and he was still plotting some things that he wanted to do to me. I heard about it. And um, I also had, even as the immediate past state chairman of the party, I heard that the current caretaker chairman of the party, Dayo uh, Ekong, Mrs., who I personally handed over to, I personally picked to take over for me because um, of our relationship, was in a kind of you know, plan with a GRV to either expel me from the party or portray me as the problem of the party. So I sought, I sought uh, the opinions of, of people in my own camp. And they said, Mr. Salako, before these people continue to rubbish your name, mm. before they continue to portray you in bad light, let the public know what has actually transpired or what is actually going on. Express yourself, speak out. So that by the time they come out with their own plan, they are able to come out with their own plan, the people will see me as the problem of the party. Okay. And that was why I decided to express myself. But the more Roosevelt was planning something against me, especially when he, he, he thought he would become the governor. So let you know, he thought he would become the governor. So he was he was planning something, and I heard about it, and I decided to speak out. All right. So let me take you up on this because. Even though you don't necessarily use the phrase anti-party, when you look at that write-up, there's a lot of accusations. You accuse them of not listening to party elders and listening to, it wasn't uh, listening to the, PDP's, uh, party, uh, the PDP's party chieftain, Chief Bode George, and his wife, which would make it seem very anti-party. But you also confess that you actually voted for the APC's governor, uh, incumbent governor, Babajide Sanwolu, and you were very happy with that decision. Doesn't that in itself speak to anti-party behavior, going directly against... <clears throat> what would have been in the best interest of your party? Well, as at the time I decided to vote for Governor Obajide Sonwolu, it has, it, it has got to the peak of it for me. The peak of the frustration. Because it was like I was the, I was the only person on the side of most of the people I trusted when I was in the party, I actually built the party. I actually led the team who built the Labour Party structure that is running the system in Lagos State today. It, and I, I wouldn't have come out to say I voted for someone. It's not a thing of pride for me. Mm. But Badebo, Roosevelt, is the one who told me that I didn't want my vote. He told me he didn't want my vote, that I didn't need my support. He called, he called our bluff. You know, in every political party, we always have camps, we always have, um, you know, um, where we belong, you know, and all of that. So, my own side where I belong is the side of the real gladiators. The people who are the who is who in the party. But it's That's interesting. Side. But it's interesting so, you mentioned that. Sorry, I apologize for apology for interrupting you. But yeah. it's interesting you mentioned that because you also mentioned that Badebo Rose Viver came from the PDP. But you also came from the APC. And during your tenure as chairman, you've had to deal with questions concerning your loyalty to the Labour Party. So in terms of that, I'd even have to ask you now, would you be willing, are you going to stay with the Labour Party? Or is this sort of internal situation one that might force you to cross the carpet again? Well, um, I am not someone that can just say I want to leave the Labour Party like that. Because I still hold a position. I hold an appointment. And which has made me to be the leader of the party in the state. I am more or less the supreme leader of the Labour Party system in Lagos State right now. What does that really mean? I am the, I am the special advisor to the national chairman of the party on Lagos State uh, Labour Party operations and I mean Labour Party affairs. 
and its liaison operations. So, by virtue of that appointment, I wouldn't have just woke, I mean, woken up in the morning and say, I am dumping Labour Party. But I am not the only person who voted for Governor Obajide Sonwulu. No. It was like we were ostracized, we were sidelined in the party by the, the, by the current people that are running the party right now in the state, at the state level. And that is the Daryl Ekong, you know, state leadership of the party. She has not been running the party to carry anybody along. She has been running the party as if it is a personal business enterprise. So, it, so a lot of prominent stakeholders in the party, leaders, elders, important stakeholders, saw the way she has been doing it, running it as if it is a personal enterprise. And we called, we called our attention to it. She wasn't listening. She has been doing that with a click of you know a group of members in the party but and you're the one who said that even within parties yeah. people will belong to certain camps yeah. even within parties so it doesn't seem like dia ekong is doing anything in particular that even you yourself have not done belonging to a certain camp or a certain fraction she, or faction within she the party. has been running the party to create that division that wasn't like that before there is nothing you will do when a political party is big you always have the caucus you belong to it is the political party that will bring everybody together. Even in APC, we have the Ashwaju Bola Metinubu's Kakos, we have the President Mamadou Mouari's Kakos, the Vice President Yemi Ashwaju has his own people. It's like that in any political party. But it is the responsibility of whoever is the state chairman, the person that is running the party, the operations of the party, to make sure that nobody is left out. Every people are treated equally. Really? Fairly, people are made to feel the sense of belonging from our own part, our own part of the divide in the party. We feel the dire ekong um, state leadership of the party wasn't carrying us along, wasn't running an all inclusive administration. And I, as the leader of the party, tried to call our attention to it. But she was different. She wasn't listening to anybody. And um, I'm also bored to say that she's one of those who has been pampering GRV in the mm -hmm. party. Because they feel, oh, without some people in the party, they could run the party on their own and still win Lagos State. For so the party. let's so talk about winning. Do it alone without some of us. So let's talk about winning Lagos yes. State because when you look at what you said, you talked about the margin uh, between the APC's candidate Babajide Sanwolu and of course uh, the Labour Party's candidate Badibol Rhodes Viver. And you actually said you were happy that God has corrected the mistake that you made. But when you look at winning Lagos State, really, how viable was a victory for Labour Party? Already by the time we were heading to the March 18th polls, you already had internal conflict. You were already having issues. You had already also left your position as chairman. So how viable was a victory for the party in Lagos State at the when, governorship level? When the Labour Party won Lagos State during the presidential election period, the presidential stroke National Assembly election period, all of us were involved. It was a game of all of us. Our commitment were there. Our passions were there. Everybody was involved. But immediately after the victory of the party um, at the presidential election, then that toga of pride came on Bradley Boros He started seeing himself as the governor of Lagos already. You know, he's a youth. He's young. And... Um, that toga of youthful exuberance. People were already calling him Your Excellency and all of that. And so he thought, he thought because the party had won for the presidency, then automatically 
the same victory will be repeated for the governorship. And um, it wouldn't have made some of us angry if it didn't come out openly to start endorsing the candidate of PDP, which was an opposition party to our party. He started up, you know, endorsing the candidate of the party he came from. He said he had left. He openly started obnoxing with them, talking about PDP. He wasn't even talking about Labour Party again. He started coming out publicly to say, oh, I'm now with PDP. I'm now running with PDP. It is my PDP people I'm banking on to to vote for me. I think those are like conversations the about a potential alliance. Is, is that what? That was conversations about a potential alliance between the PDP and the Labour Party. No, 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 no. no. By not carrying some of us along, if I'm the leader of the party in the state, you want to form a, an alliance with the party, shouldn't I know about it? Shouldn't Alaji Monshud Zavadon, the apex leader of the party in the state, shouldn't he know about it? Shouldn't Chief Sumo literally, who got annoyed, who got angry, and backed out at the last minute, shouldn't he know about it? Shouldn't Wale Okuniyi be involved? Shouldn't Professor Pantutomi and Co. be involved? Badi Bao Rosvavo was just doing things on his own. He wasn't operating with some of us, those of us who feel we are the important stakeholders in the party. He wasn't. He wasn't listening to anybody. He was more like a PDP person than being a Labour Party person. And you see, when someone says, you are nobody, you can get out with your support, then you go to somewhere else. Okay. So, so that, is what, that, is, that is what happened. So let, let's talk about the evil came out, party. The evil came out to endorse the candidates of PDP. Honorable Shek Wadewale, a.k.a. Erland, who was the candidate of PDP for Lagos State Senatorial West in the presidential election. I was in the occasion. I was in the occasion when Badebo was endorsing him against the candidate of our own party. Without even talking to me about it, I was in the occasion I was on seat. He didn't talk to me about it. We didn't even interact about it. He didn't inform me about it. And he just picked the microphone and gave that man the public endorsement even when I, as his leader in the party, was there. Okay, so let's talk so, about the party. I want us to move forward with yes. the conversation. Let's talk about the party now. Because there are a lot of issues you've pointed out, and it seems that you're saying that Gwadebo Rhodes Viver had almost a free reign to do as he wanted. He was doing whatever I liked. But then where is the party structure in all of this? Because the question then would be, what does it take to run a party, a party that wants to go into elections, a party that wants to win elections, that has a chairman in your position, that has, uh, as you said, national elders and, and um, national leaders as well. But then you have a situation where it seems one individual is able to do as he pleases. So where's the party structure? Where is the party hierarchy? Where is the, win the party coming together to do what it needs to do? Yes, the party structure is intact. And uh, but, the, but the problem is um, the leadership of the party. Immediately I left. When I was there, I was very firm on what I wanted and what I didn't want. I always make it clear to them that, okay, I am the man in charge. If this is not going to work for a party, I let them know it's not going to work. And I always, I always stood my ground. But immediately I left. Bandibok came into the hand of a woman who was overpampering him, who was all over him, making him feel he's the best that could happen to any party, making him feel, oh, that, okay, he was the all in all, that he was the alpha and omega of everything. So, and Bandibok being a young person started misbehaving. But is that bad boss fault or the fault of the party for it, not being able to curtail whatever was happening it internally? It is the fault of the party on one part, and it is the fault of bad boy on the other part. Bad boy is the one who needed the favor of party members. Even if somebody is over pampering you, making you feel like as if you are you have become the governor already, you should allow sense of reasoning to guide you to know that oh. I'm not yet the governor. I should treat my people well. Badebo was not treating 
all the people who matter in the organog organogramic operational structure of the party, he wasn't treating them well. Okay. He was telling them to their faces that he didn't trust them, that he had his own people that wanted to use to run his election, that he didn't need the people in the structure, he didn't need the structure of the party, the structure of the party didn't matter to him, to the extent that many of our local government chairmen went into Badebo's election without any financial support, no support, nothing. No support. So who he was meant to give them support? He didn't give them any, he, is, he is the candidate of the party, and he was supposed to be the financier of his own election. He was supposed to be the financier. The financier of the election from the support he would have got from the national level, the national leadership of the party, which we know we have it on information, good information, that Badebo got that support of monetary resources to spend to prosecute his election. Okay. But unfortunately, unfortunately, people who were supposed to run the operations of his election in the political structure of the party, he didn't give them anything. So let's come, back, with them. Let's, them. let's come back to the party now because you are now a former chairman and you talked about Dio Ekong, who is the caretaker chairman of the party. You also mentioned Sam uh, Opala, the state secretary uh, of the party as well. When we look at everything that has happened with the Labour Party from the presidential to the governorship, where do things go now for the Labour Party, for the state chapter particularly? Well, the, we just finished the elections. And um, the party is already counting its gains and losses and also reviewing how things were done. So in the party, we are already talking to ourselves. The same thing that is happening in the Labour Party, is happening in the PC, is happening in the PDP. You see, you can't, you can't be running an organization where, we have, where you have different human beings from different backgrounds. And expect that things to go smoothly. Even Jesus Christ didn't have it as smooth, smoothly when he was here. So it is normal. We all came from different backgrounds. We all came into the party with different hopes, you know, political interests, ambitions, and all of that. And we all want to advance the cause of why we came into the party. So it is normal for, for us to have internal conflicts. But the most important thing is for the current leadership of the party in the state, which I'm part of of which I should be part of, anyway, to give room for reconciliation. Open the window for genuine and sincere reconciliation moves. So are you willing to sit across the table from Guadalupe Roads Viver? Am I, am I, are you willing to sit across the table from him and, and work through reconciliation? Well, well you, see, you see, by my own nature, right, I really don't see Guadalupe and I running anything together anymore. Because its own nature is different from mine. So when you want to run things with someone and you are not compatible in terms of you know, operational nature, in terms, of, in terms of character manifestation and all of that, then you let him be. You also stay in your own space. The fact of the matter is we are still in the same party. That is if um, some of us are not going to be asked to go tomorrow because with the way things are, it is like some people in the party don't want some people to be there anymore. And they are not hiding it. So if they want us to continue to run the party, then they will lead the way. If they don't want us to be in the party again, then you will hear the announcement. Okay. But so the most important thing is for Labour Party in Lagos State to continue to run, to win elections, to make success, to achieve... Um, a lot of uh, the beautiful feet and all of that, then there must be a window that must be opened mm -hmm. for members of the party, gladiators of the party, prominent members of the party to come together to sit at the round table for reconciliation, uh, you know, Ish, uh, reconciliation. Purposes, yeah. Okay, so my final question is this, because the write-up is quite a long one and you've mentioned a lot in that, but 
Badibo Rose Viva seems to have responded to you differently on Twitter. And yeah, he said no, 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 that. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to that. And we've also reached out to him as well to respond to some of the things um, that you said. But he said he would not, in fact, respond to you in a tweet that he posted on March 28th and said that you were bipolar and are being ma uh, manipulated for political gain. Would you care to respond to that? Yes. Um, if he says I'm bipolar, that is his own um, judgment of it. And that is part of, part of what I've been saying about him. When I was running around, running things with him, for him to get the ticket to represent our party as a governorship candidate of the Labour Party in Lagos State, he didn't say I was bipolar. He didn't see me as a bipolar person. I have lived with a celebrity for more than 12 years. That's for looking around. That's my wife. She should be in a position to come out and say whether the husband is bipolar or not. I am an educationist. I run a school. I have been running a school for 33 years. I have trained a lot of quality Nigerians. Timaya was my student, was my former student. The popular procedure of Timaya. Timaya cannot come out to say his master is bipolar. I have a lot of students who are bank managers, who are, who are accountants, you know, pilots and all of that. They, they, they can't come out to say their master is bipolar. But you see, sometimes situations can make you appear a bipolar person. When you are dealing with someone with, with all sincerity of purpose, when you are being straightforward with somebody, you are sincere with him, you are fortunate with him, and you don't expect him to act in a certain way. And you have to respond. He's not acting in that way, and you are responding. He might conclude, if he wants to get back to you, I fired at him, he also needed to fire back, mm -hmm. and the only word he could pick is, I'm, I'm bipolar. And I went into the dictionary to see what the meaning of bipolar is, and I talked to myself that, okay, if, it's, if, if he says I'm bipolar, then which means... He is the one who put me in that condition. <laughs> All right. You see, Bande Bo was Bible's attitude. Attitude. Could, could, could make anyone uh, to go bipolar. No, Mr. Uh, and, and, uh, Mr. Sarkar, and you, Sarkar see, you, see, you see, very quickly, please. His attitude, too, also made a lot of prominent leaders and elders in the party who backed out from his project on the day of his election at the time minute. Will he also say that those people too are bipolar? All right, Mr. Salako, because Will of time... Will he also say that they are bipolar? Because of time, I, unfortunately, we do have another conversation standing by. So, um, because of time, I will have to wrap up this conversation. So you are still expecting him to respond to you. Very simple. I don't even expect that. You see, let me tell you something. I didn't even know that this is what I'm coming to talk about here. Because I told the person who invited me that I wouldn't want to come here to come and talk about this. But this is a live program. You've been putting your questions to me. And I have to respond. It is Badebo's horrible character manifestation, which is open to almost 90% of all the members of the party. We'll wrap that up now. Got me bipolar. And that will even get you bipolar. Let, let's, 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 let's wrap up. I relate to Badebo. Uh, I'm very sure he's uh, going to who hear. I relate with him. You will know what I'm talking about and what I'm faced from all his right. attitude. Mr. Olukaya De Salako, former chairman of the Labour Party in Lagos State, a conversation that has looked at issues that were raised between himself and the state's governorship candidates, as well as uh, accusations made in uh, an online article that he posted and what happens next with the Labour Party. We're going to take a quick time out. So when we come back, we get into another conversation right here on Politics HQ, so do stick around. Mm -hmm.